Welcome to Cleveland Community Chapel. Uh, good Sunday evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us in our Old Testament Bible study. It's come to my attention. I forgot to do something in this morning service that I've done every time since the church has been closed for Corona. I've said, uh, we'll do it right now. America held hostage day 77. I'm going to do that again Wednesday evening. I guess that'll be 81 or so. And that's going to be the last time I'm going to do that because we're opening the church back up next Sunday morning. We won't consider ourselves held hostage anymore then. If you're with me in our Old Testament studies, we've made it to Zechariah chapter 6. And remember, Zechariah, one of the minor prophets of the return. People are trying to get moved back from captivity, back to getting the temple back in order and getting things going again. Certainly apropos to exactly where we are here in our life thousands of years later. And Zechariah is the prophet of the visions. You know, he's almost like John on Patmos. He sees these visions, then he, the angel interprets them, and Zechariah puts them down on parchment for you and I to read thousands of years later. But originally it was to encourage the people that were coming back at the time. In fact, uh, tonight starts out with a vision that I believe John on the Isle of Patmos in Revelation chapter 6, like Zechariah chapter 6, gets the very same vision. It's correlated anyway. The four horsemen of the apocalypse, we call it over in the New Testament. So here we are in Zechariah 6. Let's pray over the scriptures tonight. Lord, we ask you to open up the scriptures to our hearts and minds in Jesus' name. Amen. Zechariah 6. And I turned and lifted up mine eyes and looked, and behold, there came four chariots out from between two mountains. And the mountains were mountains of brass, or some versions say bronze, but when you say brass in the Bible, it usually is symbolic of judgment, which is to come. When, when the Lord comes back in the second come, says he had feet like brass, and he's coming back in judgment to his second, second time here. Now let's look at the vision continuing it here. He sees these chariots come out from between the mountains of brass, and Zechariah says, in the first chariot were red horses. And then if you flip later and you do your own study on your own, go over Revelation 6 and Zechariah 6 and do this back and forth, you'll see John interprets some of this stuff to out in the future where Zechariah was just speaking to his folks primarily when he first did. But Zechariah, or John takes it and says, this is what they stand for here. The first chariot were red horses, and John tells you, he says, that was, uh, he had a, boar, a bow, and he went forth to conquer, and you find out that that red horse in Revelation is war that's to come upon the whole earth, violence, war. And then the second chariot that is black horses, and so John says the, uh, he saw the four horsemen, there's a red one and a black one, the order's not exactly the same in the two chapters here, but John says that the that the black horse was famine. His um, scales went behind it and uh, they, there wasn't enough to eat. So there's war and then there's famine brought on by the war. And then there's a third chariot that's got white horses. And, and John interprets, I believe, that white horse to be uh, the Antichrist at the end of the days to come. And he's conquering over the whole world here. And then following the white horse are these grizzled and bay horses that Zechariah sees. Uh, John says it's a pale horse, and he says it's death and hell that's following him, the pale horse of death. Then I answered and said to the angel and talked with me, What are these, my Lord? And the angel answered and said, These are the four spirits of the heavens which go forth from standing for the Lord of all the earth. I think this just means that these are the judgments that are going across the whole world, and God sending these judgments. The black horses, which are therein, go forth to the north country, and the white go after them, and the grizzle go forth to the south country. And I think that just, you will know, find out they're just going throughout the whole world. They head out north and south and encompass the world. And the bay went forth and sought to go that they might walk to and fro through the earth. And he said, Get you hence, walk to and fro through the earth. So they walked to and fro through the earth. Then cried he upon me and spake unto me, saying, Behold, these that go toward the north country have quieted my spirit in the north country. Remember the Babylonians, for they have come down out of the north. The judgment came from the north. And the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Take of them of the captivity. Now these are the returned captives. He's going to name some names, but it's just symbolic of the rest of them. 
Take of them of the captivity, even Hildai, Tobijah, and Jedi, which are come from Babylon. These are some of the return folks. And come thou the same day and go into the house of Josiah. Remember, he was the high priest in Zechariah's day. Josiah, the son of Zephaniah. And he said, take silver and gold and make crowns and set them upon the head of Josiah, of Joshua, the son of Josedek, the high priest. So, even in the Old Testament, you, know, you realize there was like a separation between the secular government and the religious leaders. The religious leaders didn't wear the crown. There would be a king that was reigning, but there would also be a high priest representing the religious sector. But now they're putting the crown upon the high priest, and you don't see that. And this is a, well, what's going on here in this vision. And speak unto him when you put them crowns upon him, crowns, pearl on him. Speak unto him, saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, Behold, the man whose name is the branch. Now that's important. I know I didn't look in the other versions, but if you've got a King James Version, branch, every letter is capitalized because that is one of the names of the Messiah that you find in the Old Testament. B-R-A-N-C-H, the branch. There's more prophecies about him. A root would come out of, the, of Jesse, you know, but he's the branch. It's talking about Jesus, the Messiah, which was to come in Zechariah's day. So put them crowns upon Josiah and remind him that the branch, the Messiah, is coming. By the way, a little side note, if you're old enough to remember, back in 1993 it was that cult down in Waco, Texas, uh, David Koresh, they called themselves the Branch Davidians. Davidians from David and Branch from one of the names of the Messiah. Wasn't nothing wrong with the name, I don't guess, Branch Davidians. There's something real wrong with David Koresh's teaching, but that's where that Branch part comes from. The man whose name is the Branch. And he'll grow up out of his place. And, and he, he being the branch, now he'll build the temple of the Lord. Now what Zechariah's people were doing, they were building the literal brick and mortar temple of the Lord in that day. But here we see something prophetic in this vision to say uh, it correlates with Matthew 16 where Jesus says, I will build my church. He's the one. Now he does it through his church. John Wesley said, we can do nothing without him. But then he quickly added, but he won't do anything without us. That's, we're God's hands and feet and mouthpiece here on earth. If we are obedient to the Lord and do our part, then Jesus said, I'll build my church. And that's in the prophecy here. The man whose name is the branch, he'll grow up and he'll build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord. And he shall bear the glory. Jesus gets the glory for anything that's done here. And he'll sit and rule upon his throne. And he'll be a priest upon his throne. He's our great high priest making intercession for us. And the council of peace will be between, be between them both. You know, it, it's the, not there's trouble going on in the world all the time. But there's peace going on in the believer's heart. And Jesus is the prince of peace. His name will be called the prince of peace. Wonderful counselor. And crowns will be to these captives now, Helam and Tobijah, Jedidiah, Hen, the son of Zephaniah, for a memorial in the temple of the Lord. Now they put the crowns upon the high priest in that day, but extra biblical out of the Bible history tells us that what they did with them, he wasn't going to wear two crowns around. They put them up in the windows of the temple that they were building, and it was a memorial for what God had done. But it was also a prophetic voice to the nation of Israel that the man whose name is the branch is coming. He's going to build the real temple, the, the church, the New Testament church. For a memorial in the temple of the Lord. And it's a memorial to these name of list who are the captives who have been set free. Because, see, that's how Jesus builds his church. We're under the captivity of sin until we find the free pardon of sin in the cross of Jesus Christ. And he sets the captives free. And those crowns is a, that we crown, we cast our crowns at the feet of Jesus. And it's a memorial to what Jesus has done. He set us captives free in the free pardon of, of sin through, by grace through faith. And I like this last verse. It says, And they that are far off will come and build in the temple of the Lord. 
You know, Jesus told his disciples in the first century, he said, you go and preach that gospel till it goes throughout the whole world. And they that are far off will build in the temple of the Lord. And the way we build is, Peter tells us, each and every believer is a living stone in that temple of the Lord, the spiritual temple. No, you're not. Your bodies are the temple. We're all bricks in the wall, if you would. They that are far off will come and build in the temple of the Lord. And you'll know that the Lord of hosts has sent me unto you. Here we are thousands of years later, and we know that, that Zechariah was sent of the Lord, but we know that Jesus was sent of the Lord too. And this shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. And that'll be my admonition as we close chapter 6 tonight. Diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God. In Jesus' name, we'll see you Wednesday night. Amen.